I didn't eat anything for 22 days. That's one day longer than Gandhi's <laughs> longest fast. <laughs> <laughs> Hey there, Interactors. I recently had the honor of speaking at the A-Word, which is the first event of its kind, uh, designed to help empower vegans to speak about their veganism and find their own form of activism. This was my first time doing this talk, so I hope you enjoy. Can we please welcome Jeremy to the stage? <laughs> Yeah, let's give a hand up for all the speakers tonight. I mean, some great, great ideas, right? I think the thing that makes this event cool is just to show how many different things are out there and just to get us all thinking about it. So um, for my bit, I'm going to do something a little bit different. So instead of q and I'm just going to talk for about 15 minutes maybe, and then if there's some time at the end, I'm happy to take any questions or if you just have some opinions you want to share with the group, that'd be great too. So um, who wants to hear some exciting news about my veganism? <laughs> anyway, <laughs> All right, that's fortunate. Uh, <laughs> so about four years ago when I first went vegan, I was horrified by what I saw. I was so bothered. I knew I wanted to be vegan, but I knew I wanted to do more. So what did I do? I drank water. You're probably thinking, all right. I did a, a water-only fast, and the cool thing about it was I promoted veganism by encouraging 21 people from four different countries to eat vegan with me while I fasted. Uh, so the, the whole goal was to basically show that eating vegan isn't as complicated as people think. So you might be thinking, how long did I last? I didn't eat anything for 22 days. That's one day longer than Gandhi's <laughs> longest fast. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so this striking resemblance, right? <laughs> so, th so this event, it, it, it uh, helped build some awareness, but it didn't really inspire the change I really wanted. And after that, I had several passionate discussions, and you know, I, I did my best to promote uh, veganism in the way I, I, I thought I could, but they weren't that effective. And as a, as a result, I withdrew. <laughs> I avoided talking about veganism at all costs. I knew that um, it was likely to bring up an uncomfortable situation that uh, might lead to negative interaction. That all changed. <laughs> that all changed about uh, early, earlier this year when I started to proactively engage others on a topic. <laughs> This has been a profoundly liberating experience for me. Since then, my sister's gone vegan. My mom, who's just turned 70, um, has just gone vegan. Hey. <laughs> and I've engaged hundreds of members of the public. And the biggest shock to me is people just don't know what's going on in these industries. The average person walking down the street doesn't know what happens to male offspring in the dairy and egg industries. That's why it's so important that we get out there and find our voice and talk about it. For me, I've found that a strong foundation of communication skills is where my activism has uh, begun, and that's what I'm here to talk to you about tonight. So basically what I'm going to go through is how um, understanding the psychology of change can help us to deliver more relevant information to who we're talking to, um, some basic communication strategies to, so that our message can be better heard and understood. I'm going to talk about um, positivity and how if, if we're positive, um, people are more likely to be drawn towards us and our message. And then lastly, taking that leap of faith, because it doesn't matter how good you are at those first three things if you don't get out there and, and give it a go. And uh, I'll, I'll wrap it all up by um, sharing how this fits in with my vision for um, uh, the, the, the big picture. So a few, a few quick qualifiers. First of all, I'm, I'm going to do a very high-level overview of a lot of these concepts. You could spend your whole life on some of these things. I'm just going to focus on what has been the most impactful to me. Um, I'm also not going to talk to you about why to be vegan. If you're vegan curious, there's loads of lovely vegans in the room here tonight. After the, the um, event, go find one of them and uh, try some of these techniques out for yourself. Um, also, this is only my perspective. We're all different people. I'm not up here to say this is the only way to do things. Um, my hope is to share some of the things that have been particularly helpful to me in the hopes that there might be something that you can use in your own advocacy. 
So my change all started because of this book. Um, it's called Motivational Methods for Vegan Advocacy. It was written by Casey Taft, who is the primary developer in the first and only programs to both stop and prevent domestic violence. He's taken these techniques and he's applied them to vegan advocacy. Now when looking at psychology, it's important to think about um, what stage people are in. Um, and for those of you who are familiar with psychology in the room, there's a, a model called the trans theoretical model that basically looks more into this. Um, so I'll go over them very quickly, but the first stage is pre-contemplation. This is when the person hasn't really thought about the issues and doesn't see any need to change. Um, at this stage, it's really good to just share a few uh, awareness building messages. Um, you're not going to get um, someone that's in pre-contemplation to necessarily go vegan right on the spot. Uh, contemplation phase is when they're aware of some of the issues, but don't necessarily see that need to change. That's where it's really important to reiterate that ethical consideration and, and, and why there is action necessary. Uh, next is the preparation or the action stage. This is where they've acknowledged there's an issue and maybe even starting to make some of the changes. And what's important at this stage is to really empower people and, and say that you can absolutely do this. Talk about their support network and, and, and see what might help them um, um, to make the transition themselves. Lastly is the maintenance stage where someone is already vegan and this is not a stage to be overlooked, wahoo. Um, th there's a very, very high recidivist rate with veganism so it's really important to reiterate why people are, are vegan and uh, again looking at their support network to, to help keep them going. Now, <laughs> you might be asking Jeremy, this is great, but how am I going to figure out what stage someone in. My proposal is asking two questions to help steer the conversation in the most effective path. The first question I like to ask is, have you had any personal experience with veganism? If the person says no, they're probably in that pre-contemplation phase. If they say yes, um, you might want to ask them, have you ever considered going vegan? If they say no, they're probably in that contemplation phase. If they say yes, they might be in that preparation or that action stage so you can better tailor what you uh, uh, say to them um, based on that. Now, a few other psychological considerations is to focus on your own experiences. Um, a good example of this is using I statements instead of you should be doing this. Um, an example of this is a, a few weeks ago I was on a bus and um, there's a few younger guys um, talking to me about cooking chicken to the point where it was making me grossed out, quite frankly. And um, in the past, I might have overreacted and said that knee-jerk reaction that I think we all would like to say some of those times. And instead, I, I just very calmly and assertively asked them if they'd ever met a chicken. I, <laughs> I know, right? I, I told them about the experiences I have volunteering um, on the animal sanctuary and how the chickens there are so fascinating. They follow me around when I'm working in their enclosure. They're so intelligent and they're just such cool animals. It was a very positive experience. Um, the other thing that um, I think we've uh, touched on earlier is to view others as pre-vegans. I honestly believe everyone has the capability to go vegan. Whether that will happen in the near future or the long term, that's not up for me to decide. But if we view people like this, it's going to help us to water those positive seeds um, and that will grow from there. Um, the other thing is to set a very clear end goal of veganism. Casey's, goal, uh, t Casey's programs around domestic violence don't say, you know what? Just, if you could just t tone it down to just psychological abuse, you know, just, just no physical abuse, they don't say that. They set a very clear end goal. And the reason for this is anything less will send a mixed message. Um, a few things I personally like to avoid is comparison to human injustices. Um, trying to convince the population that animals aren't put here to be eaten is already a monumental task. I feel that comparisons to slavery or the Holocaust are an additional hurdle to get over, implying that humans and animals are equal. And regardless of our viewpoints on that, it's not necessary to make the vegan case. Um, the other thing that is, this is a talk in and of itself, there's a, um, Casey did a talk I have on my YouTube channel about trauma within the vegan community. And, uh, this is something that I think all of us in our advocacy work would um, be willing to uh, agree that there's some stuff that's unavoidable. And the, the thing that is important to be aware of is at what point that's sustainable and not, and finding that support network um, so that we can talk about these things that bother us. Uh, excessive trauma um, often leads to misanthropy, um, that hatred of humanity um, or that dislike and unless you're going around advocating uh, veganism to dogs and cats, there's a pretty good chance you're talking to a human animal. That's why it's essential that we don't come across as um, hating uh, humanity because there's a good chance that that person might shut down to the message if we come across as hating them. Now a few uh, cornerstones of communication I'd like to share. You've probably heard these before but good to reiterate 
demonstrate um, assertiveness is doesn't, doesn't mean cocky. What it means is that we're confident in what we're saying. Um, being genuine in what we're saying. If we want people to be vegan, we can't talk about vegetarianism. We've got to um, talk about what we actually want. Um, if we say something that bothers someone, the knee-jerk reaction I know for me is to say, I'm sorry for upsetting you. Um, the, the problem with this is it dilutes our message, and it, sh- it should be avoided if we can. Next is to be open-minded. I like to go into every interaction like I'm going to learn something from them. Oftentimes I do. And along the lines with that is to show that we're listening and to use those active listening skills. Um, it's, sometimes it's e- as simple as just repeating back to that person what they've just said to you. It's really easy and highly effective. Um, and probably the most important thing on this slide is to show empathy. Uh, a few weeks ago at a, a Cuba Truth event that uh, Mark and I um, uh, arranged, there was an individual that was particularly moved by the footage. Um, I could see he was tearing up. And um, instead of holding back, I walked that path with him. And I, I got a bit emotional myself and I think because I was willing to do that he was more likely to open up to me and we had a really good exchange about what happens in these industries. At the end of the interaction he signed up for Challenge 22 and vowed to go vegan right there on the spot. What's Challenge 22? <laughs> I'm glad you asked. <laughs> um, so Challenge 22 is, as you might have guessed, a 22-day program. Um, I just signed up to the, the mentorship side of it, which I'm going to um, discuss here in a little bit. Um, but basically it's uh, the design is to um, try veganism for 22 days um, and, and uh, with all the support and resources that you might need um, to set yourself up for success. And it's just really picked up in the last couple of years. But they're inundated with requests, so that's a good sign that veganism is growing. I find humor um, helps to um, keep people engaged in otherwise conversations that might be quite um, challenging. And also, um, to, to try not to mind read. If the person's talking to you, that means they're thinking about veganism. That means we're doing our jobs. Uh, in terms of a backup plan, if the conversation gets side railed, it's a good idea to always bring it back to the animals. And if need be, just disengage from the interaction. Every interaction you have isn't going to be a success story. So knowing when that person responds to your positivity with negativity is a pretty good sign to disengage. Um, practice makes perfect, be it at, uh, in front of a mirror at home, or maybe you have a companion animal you'd like to talk to, or friends and family. This is going to set ourselves up for success when we do have those interactions. Um, the question I like to always ask myself when I'm thinking about um, how to respond to someone, instead of that knee-jerk reaction, is what what can I say that will best help the animals? Now, a few uh, traps I like to try to avoid. <laughs> Bruce Lee has a great quote that effectively means when we um, take that single interaction focus uh, of winning out of the equation, our words will fire at the precise right moment and set ourselves up for success. Our language is, is also important. Using words like uh, murder or rape implies, um, and I saw this in a recent James Aspie interview where the person um, literally responded back to him and saying, are you trying to call me a murderer or a rapist? And, and uh, I think when we do that, it's, it's, it runs the risk of the communication shutting down. And oftentimes you can use different words to say the same thing, and it's just a matter of exploring that. Um, and sometimes it takes trial and error. Uh, watching a person's body language, if they're crossing their arms, they might be shutting down to your message. And I often find, particularly a chat I had with a farmer, that I saw his arms cross, and I just went about the same thing from a different direction. We talked for 25 minutes. At the end, I said, so what's been your experience with veganism? And he's like, oh, I don't want to talk about veganism. We've been talking about veganism for 25 minutes. <laughs> uh, and, and knowing when en- uh, enough is enough, particularly in those earlier um, stages, um, this can be quite a, 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 a challenging topic for people to contemplate. So those few awareness building messages um, and can do a lot of good. And if the person leaves feeling good, they're more likely to revisit the topic again with other people and within themselves. Socrates said, I cannot teach anybody any Anything. I can only make them think. This next slide has a few of my favorite Socrates style questions, with the, which is, are basically open ended questions with the goal of getting the person to think. Do you think we can thrive without eating animals? Do you think animals' lives matter? Do you think buying animals to be eaten supports animal cruelty? Do you value life over taste? It doesn't really matter what questions we ask. The goal is to break down that disconnect between animals and what we eat. Now, if you're able to ask those really good questions, you can give them good communication that is just as stimulating as black coffee and just as hard to sleep after. When we're having interactions with people, we want to give them that cup of coffee. Now, this is me (laughs) about four years ago before I went vegan. That's right. That's me. This is all me. 
this isn't a bad guy. There's seeds of compassion within him. I like to go into every interaction like I'm talking to this guy because I know if I water those positive seeds, they'll naturally blossom into veganism. (laughs) (laughs) So um, in these conversations, when we're talking about positivity that draws people towards our message, it's not always easy saying positive in a world that a lot of dark stuff is happening. Um, One thing that I like to do is to ask myself open-ended questions. Um, For those of you who don't know, I'm quite a keen cyclist. I'm talking, you know, spreadsheets, power tests, um, you name it. And especially when I've got a co-pilot like this one. (laughs) As I've gotten more involved in my advocacy work, I've started to feel a lot of guilt about my bike collecting dust. I knew what I was doing was important, but I still um, had feelings about it and... What, what really changed it for me is asking myself, Jeremy, is advocacy your work doing more important than riding your bike? The answer to that question was yes, and I, I was able to reshift my focus back to the positive. All right, now a bit of a thought experiment for everyone here. So imagine there are two wolves in a fight. One is good, one is evil. Who thinks the good wolf wins? Anybody? Good wolf? Any other good wolf votes? Good wolf? Good wolf? Maybe? All right, who thinks the bad wolf wins? Oh, bad wolf. Bad wolf. Oh, a couple bad wolves in the back here. (laughs) So the answer is the wolf that wins is the wolf that we feed. These two wolves are everywhere we look in the world. They're in every interaction we have. They're within ourselves. The question I have for you is which wolf are you going to feed? So the next section I'd like to talk about a few forms of activism, and we've explored loads of them tonight that I think are really exciting. Um, the, a few forms that I've tried myself that I've found particularly effective, and the first is just in front of your computer. This is a great way to get started. You can learn how to communicate, and if it doesn't go that well, you know, you'll probably never meet that person anyway. Um, we talked about Challenge 22, becoming a mentor, is a great way to do this. Um, I only finished the program just last night. It's a very well-run program, and uh, it's a great way to inspire people who want to be vegan and they're just not quite sure how. Next is uh, chalking or chalktivism. Um, when North Street was closed here a few weeks ago, I took it as an opportunity to introduce to the world the cube of chalk. Four different messages seen by thousands of eyes and it only took me a few minutes to do. And it was fun, right? It was fun. <laughs> the other is uh, attending uh, outreach events, such as the Cuba Truth when, um, that I mentioned earlier. That discussion I had where the person signed up for Challenge 22 would not have happened without events like this to serve as a catalyst. So if you have any questions about the Cuba Truth, um, let Mark or myself know. We run the local chapter, and there's usually events uh, about once or twice a month. So it's a great event because it doesn't matter who you are. You can come out and talk to people, or you can just come there and hold something. Your face is covered. It doesn't matter. Um, the, the hardest part is showing up. The rest of it is just fun. And you get an amazing buzz afterwards. And lastly, is just talking to people in, in our day-to-day lives, um, even just strangers, um, and just practicing those skills. Now, my perspective is if we view all of the interactions about veganism around the world, I would say about 10% are effective. About 10% I would classify as passionate and possibly to the point where the person doesn't necessarily embrace the message we're trying to show them. This leaves a whopping 80% of interactions that never happen because people are within that withdrawn stage that I was in myself until just recently. That's why it's really important to reflect on how to find our own voice. Now, as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give other people the permission to do the same. When we're exploring different forms of activism, it's a matter of finding that way to shine, so we give other people um, that permission uh, to find their own ways to shine. Now, just to recap, the four keys to my um, path to activism are understanding the psychology of change so that I can identify the stage someone is at and deliver more relevant information to that person. Um, those communication skills so my message is better heard. Staying positive both in my communication and within myself so people can be drawn towards me and hopefully my message. And lastly, taking that leap of faith that puts all this into action. Now you might be asking, I'm only one person. What change can I really inspire? 
My view is that what we've been talking about in the last 15 minutes or so is the bottom-up grassroots effort that we can all get involved in. This combined with ad campaigns such as Go Vegan World, if you haven't checked out, is a phenomenal example of how to um, build awareness. And it's my view that these two efforts combined will meet each other in the middle and create a vegan world. So I want to close today by articulating one key point. Truth is like a lion. Set it free and it can defend itself. What we've been talking about here tonight is how to set that truth free. There are as many forms of activism as there are colors in the rainbow. You can type comments on your computer. You can go to vegan outreach events. You can talk about veganism in your day-to-day -day lives. The only limits are in our minds. A vegan world is coming. Every single person in this room here today has the capability to inspire change. Change happens because one person stands up, then two people stand up, then ten people stand up, then a hundred people stand up. Before you know it, thousands of people are standing up. I want to stand up for the animals. Will you join me? Yeah! <laughs> Thanks, guys. Uh, <laughs> I've really been wanting to get that out, by the way. <laughs> um, yeah, so a few, uh, um, for in vegan interactions, there's a few different ways to engage with us. We've got a Facebook group set up for support, um, a YouTube channel, which has only been live for about a month or so, where I do uh, street interviews and then break them down from a, a psychology perspective. And then also on our website, you can get a free discussion guide. That's a, a great way, I, I think, to get started. I hope you enjoyed the talk. If there's anything that was unclear, um, please uh, let me know in the comments below. Um, ask any questions you might have. And if you have a different perspective on any of the topics I discussed, let us know that too. This talk was shortened to fit into 20 minutes. Do you want to miss out on the longer, more interactive version of this talk? I didn't think so. Be sure to hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching. I want to close today by articulating one key point. Truth Jeremy. Is what are you doing with that banana? <laughs>